Hey guys, it's Rival. Welcome back to another VOD review. Today, I, I can't get enough of this guy. I'm gonna review him until the channel dies. His name is Xiao Chao Meng. I'm sure you guys have heard him. 2000 LP, Chinese Super Server Top Laner. We're playing Set versus Garen today. I've already watched this game, because I just watch him in my spare time, because he's just that much fun to watch. And this is probably, like as a top laner, I am searching for the secret formula in the ability to 1v9 my games from the top lane. Like, I have had a shocker of solo queue games today. My bot lane's been going 0 and 20, uh, my bot lane's been going 0 and 20, their bot lane's gone fucking 50 kills in the first 10 minutes. I literally can't deal with it. I have been looking for the magic formula on how to 1v9 games, and this guy seems to be able to do it the most consistently. So we're watching him play Set versus Garen today. And this is probably one of the biggest 1v9 performances I've seen so far, as we see him pick up his first solo kill of the game. Just like that. I love how high pressure this guy is. It's literally the best thing to watch, because the reason I'm so drawn to top lane is because the role itself is very secluded, it's very isolated, and it's just a battle between you and the opposing top laner. Like, yeah, junglers can intervene and fuck your day up, but I uh, I primarily like top because of the melee matchups and the fact that it's so heavily 1v1 centric. Bit of ego involved, you know. Nothing like a dopamine hit of getting a uh, 1v1 top lane, as we see the first solo kill of the game. Now, as you see, <laughs> this game transpires very quickly into a run over from the enemy team. We already have a double kill bot lane solo, by the way, no jungler involved. So it's already not looking too good. This is the kind of stuff I'm sitting top, I'm feeling good, I've got a kill already, and then I see my bot lane die, and I'm just like, oh my god. Anyway, uh, nothing's wrong, it's just the recording on YouTube is just skipping ahead. Um, I'm gonna go over the runes really quickly. I'm gonna bring them up on the screen right now. We have a pretty standard Conqueror set up for the set here today. Uh, this is very stock standard, I feel. Most top laners actually go this page. Very, very few differences in the melee top. So we've got Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand. We know sets are very strong, uh, split pusher and very auto attack focused. So he builds, um, he goes very well with attack speed. So Alacrity, we have the single attack speed shard uh, because again, getting that second auto off in the trades is very, very important. It does more damage, it's got more range. Uh, then we have an attack damage shard and a armor shard, obviously. Um, I haven't watched this game in a few days, so I'm kind of a bit hazy against who's against. I think it's Nidalee and Vladimir topside as well with an Ezreal Zillion, I think it is. Yeah, it looks pretty relevant. Anyway, what we've seen in this gameplay is, um, I know I haven't spoken about it yet, but what we've seen in this gameplay is literally a translation of his lead top into the rest of the map. He controls skirmishes so well on set, as in like he just... Every ability he casts, he just gets max value out of. And I've also noticed something with Xiao Chaoming. He never, like, when I'm all leaning, I literally lead with Ignite. Like, I panic. I'm like, I need to do everything I possibly can to get this kill. I'm not waste. I'll flash if I have to. This guy doesn't use anything until he absolutely has to. He keeps, like, such insane composure in his 1v1s, his 2v2s, his 2v1s, like, everything. He just holds every ability until the most optimal time to use it. He doesn't panic. He's not spamming anything. He waits for the most optimal time to use things. Gets the max value and efficiency out of spells. I absolutely love to see it. This guy, oh, I can't get enough. That's why I chose this gameplay. It's literally led by him. I think in the end, he ends up getting like a 75 to 80% KP. And in a few of my other reviews I've actually uh, done, uh, people weren't really happy with me because um, the jungler kind of like got him a lead. But uh, yeah, as we see him to be running right now. So like the, their jungler would come, uh, give him a kill, and then he would lead that way. And I'm like saying it's one v nine, and everyone's like, "Well, the jungler came and just controlled the whole game for him." So we're watching it purely from top lane today. I don't think he gets any help from his jungler. As we see, their bot lane die against one and four four minutes in the, into the game. His bot lane currently at uh, one death per minute. As we got the slow push pushing into Garen here, I'm gonna start analyzing and stop uh, gassing this guy up before I think. <laughs> But I think he gets ganked again here in a second. But other than that, he plays the game very, very well. We see him build the slow push here, guys. We know slow pushing is a very, very important tactic top lane. And I didn't start climbing until I learned how to do this properly. Uh, slow pushing itself, as this is the gank I'm talking about, I think. That actually, if he didn't get silenced there, like a really good sequencing from Garen. If he didn't get silenced there, he probably would have killed at least Garen because he had his ignite up. He would have E'd Nidalee and Garen together, W ignited, and Garen would have died. Maybe he could have killed Nidalee too in the wave for the triumph, who knows. Maybe hit six off a kill or a few creeps. I don't know. Unlucky. The silence is very good from Garen. We see a phage rush. I can't remember what patch this is. It's definitely recent. It's probably within like the, the first, uh, most recent one or two. Uh, Phage built into Gore Drinker before Caulfield did, so this could just be going straight into Corf, uh, Gore Drinker. I can't really remember, if I'm honest, I'm sorry. Um, what was I saying before? Um, I can't even remember where I was going. I said something before the game was not Oh, slow pushing, right. So, slow pushing we see, it actually starts from under your tower. So, this is a bounce. A bounce has just happened and it's about to turn into a slow push. 
So I say this in every VOD review, but I'm in a VOD, like it's one to seven guys. This game is like over. In my head, I would be FFing, I'd be flaming people, it'd just be all over. What we do, we do slow pushes. Okay, he's doing a fast push here. I'm not really sure why. I think it's, I don't know. I think it's a mistake. I'm not Zhao Chaming. He's probably doing it for a reason. When Typically when you do a slow push in top lane, and uh, I never do fast pushes, but you do a slow push in top lane because it protects you from ganks. And the opposing top laner can't trade into you because they're going to eat a lot of minion aggro. Um, and also, you can set up a dive because you have so many minions in the tower. You and your jungler can like literally walk onto the enemy tower for free, uh, hit the enemy champion, and they're just going to die. And then also concede the wave. So they lose a massive amount of resources. They take minion aggro. Like, there's a hundred reasons why you do a slow push. I didn't start climbing properly until I learned how to do a slow push. I never managed waves. I never manipulated anything. And then I eventually got into it, and it was just where I started to climb was when I really started focusing on my wave management, my manipulation. Seem juggling his Conqueror here, waiting for that W. He might even go for a solo here. Like, I don't know, this guy's a freak. He just knows his limits so well, man. Okay, Garen flashes it, well played. I actually thought he was going to get a solo there. It looked like it for a second, but Garen obviously had flash up. Unlucky. Uh, Garen actually has uh, lethal here, because um, he has ult up still. So if he finds a way to get him the set and silences him, I think he might be able to burst him with his ult, but set's just going to push the wave in. It's 2 to 9 at 7 minutes, guys. This is some OS level gameplay going on from his teammates. They're probably given up, to be honest. I think Garen's going to die here. So he leaves with an auto E. Bam. Just like that. Let's break that kill down, guys, really quickly. Um, I want to get more into set because I think this champion's amazing when you're ahead and you can pilot him the same as uh, Xia Chao Ming. Um, so we're just going to break this kill down really quickly. Let's just backspace it. So he leads first. He leads with an auto. So, wait, does he even get the auto damage off? Let's see if this actually happens. Yeah, he does. So, leaves with an auto, cancels the auto animation with his E, gets the stun, Q, Q, W, after the ignite, as Zillion dies again. So, it's 3 to 10, leading the way top lane. Garen is the only bleed on his team, really letting him down. Very clean solo kill, doesn't have to flash nothing. If I'm in this situation, like, I don't know my set from, I don't, like, I just don't know this champion as well as I know my ribbon. If I'm in this situation, I'm panicking, I'm flashing, I'm doing everything I possibly can to get the kill. I probably get the kill, I probably almost die and have to flash and base straight away. The way this guy plays it is just so clean and calculated. Okay. Again, another little tip that I have to go with set. I learned this literally the first day I played set. I watched a VOD of Whippo doing it. When you're um, taking the tower like this, it's actually not a bad thing for you to eat the tower aggro. So as you see, his uh, bar and his health fills up. The, more, the higher that is, the more damage his W does. So he purposely eats that tower shot to make his W do more damage to clear the wave faster. I learned that literally the first day that I played set. Um, I think I like the reason you watch pros play and play these champions is because they just know kind of like the extent at which you can do everything. So I watched Whippo do it on like literally the very first day. It was so good to watch. Um, and that was like one of the first things I picked up. I was like, this man's an absolute genius. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Because like when I first played set on the first day, I was like, this champion's so fun. I loved his theme. I hadn't had a champion that came out in so long that I wanted to play. And just watching Xiao Chao Ming has like reignited my passion, like to play, like to learn or play this champion to his extent. He's such a good duelist. He's such a good split pusher. He's such a good team fighter. I just can't seem to make him work the same way that this guy does. But anyway, we see Echo trying to fight this Nidalee. We've got a smite off. Xerath steals the Herald with ult. Nidalee's coming in. We have Xiao Men probably going to pick up the kill on Nidalee. Has flash and ult in five seconds. If he plays this slowly, uh, let's see what happens here. I think he. F I was going to say maybe he flash ease. Dude, it feels like he just doesn't take damage, and he's got like nothing up, and he's still chasing. Like this guy's a madman. Surely Vlad kills him here, or maybe he just knows he like cooldowns that well. I don't know. Like, it's just stuff like this. He's got a little bit of a lead. Their bot lane's 0-20 already. He's got a little bit of a lead, and he controls the skirmish perfectly with it. He knows exactly how to play it. As Zerath also steals the Herald, which is another big thing for topside. We get a little bit more economy in the top side of the lane, uh, top side of the map, as we see. Like, their bot's just completely griefing the game. I feel like they've given up. We're going to see him uh, implement a little bit of strong mental here, something a very, very key aspect a top laner should have. You're going to see a bot lanes do this all the time. We've got Garen rushing Bramble Vest. I don't really know. Like, it's good into Conqueror. It's not that great into Set. Like, people have a weird conception about Set that he heals a whole lot. Uh, other than Conqueror, he doesn't really, and he's passive as well. But it's not, like, it's not a Fiora level buy. You know what I mean? Like, you get so much value out of building Bramble Vest on, against a Fiora. I don't really know why you would rush it against a Set. I feel like Tabby's probably better. But, hey. I'm not... 
a Chinese high elo player. Who knows? Let's skip ahead, guys. Let's see what he gets. You'll pick up his Gore Drinker here. One thing I've also noticed about his build paths, he doesn't go Boots 2 early. I feel like Boots 2 is a really, really high value item because you get the spike a lot earlier than other players, but he always builds components first, um, which I find really interesting. As he picks up a... So Zeros doing a little bit of work. As he grabs a Cloth Armor and a... Um, Kindle Gem? No, a Ruby Crystal, sorry. Just off the bat, from what I can remember, I think he goes Dead Man's Plate. Um, pretty smart. We need a bit of a tanky frontline. Um, set obviously scales really well with health, and um, they have a lot of movement speed champions in their in their comp. So Garen obviously with his Q, just ignoring the Garen. Who cares? Gets a couple of autos off W. Garen needs a W with his W. Nidalee, Garen, Zillion as well. Obviously Vladimir with Phase Rush. Um, a lot of their champions are really really fast, and Set obviously has a pretty big restriction in the fact that he's a melee with no dashes. He just has a movement speed steroid in his Q. So I don't really know why people, more people don't really rush Ghost on set either. I feel like Ghost on set, in theory, is really good, but he also has a ton of kill pressure with Ignite, so I don't know. Maybe it's worth trialing Ghost Ignite, who knows. Uh, we see him pretty much ignoring this Garen because Garen's gone defensive components only. He's just wanting to chip down this um, this tower as much as he can. He can't really kill Garen if he's just under the tower completely. He's going to be farming the waves at 6 CS. Uh, 6 CS. What is happening, bot? He's going to be getting the 6 CS out of the wave as Zillion revives Ezreal. I hate this champion and I hate the fact that he's in the meta. So I guess the next best thing that he can do is try and take the tower. As we've seen, Nilly comes in for the gank. Misses the stun. Garen's going to die to Ignite. Should die to Ignite, anyway. Okay, I think he kills Nidalee here too. Oh, maybe Nidalee Qs? Yeah, okay. Very, very close, but he's able to pick up the kill with Zerath there, so not too bad. Two for one, not a bad result. The only thing I think that may have worked probably a bit better, and I probably would have missed this too, is if he was able to E uh, Nidalee and Garen together, but this is obviously a high elo game, so maybe they know to avoid that kind of thing. Pretty well played, he goes one for two. Either way, not the worst results, not like he died for free. Let's just keep it going. I'm going to freeze it on the uh, scoreboard here so you guys can kind of see. So we've got an 0 and 13 bot lane at 12 minutes. Zerath really ahead though. The good thing about Zerath being ahead here is because they can actually stall the game out pretty safely. So Zerath can literally sit under tier 2 and just clear waves for 9 years. There's nothing they can do about it. They can't really siege with the Vladimir. They've got a bit of poke in the Ezreal, but like Zerath can just keep sieging. As long as he doesn't die under tower, they're just going to keep farming. So Set's going to have to answer the Zillion Ezreal here, I think. They're not going to go mid because it's actually smart of the enemy bot lane because they can't really go... Like If they go mid, their impact is just nullified by the Zerath who's just one-shotting waves anyway. So they might as well go against the melee who's strong and try and um, cut off some of his resources. He's not really, like, yes, he's very strong, but he's not really in the position where he can deal with a 1,000 bounty, 7, 0, and 8 Ezreal. Uh, Zillion as well, like, he could just cuck this guy. That W damage. Oof. See, Zillion is just like, I, like, I don't know why, I just feel like these movement speed champions that are in the meta, like Karma Zillion, are so, like, cheesy. Because they don't have to do anything to execute their abilities. They're just... Like, you're just faster or slower than them. You know what I mean? And in League, where movement speed is such an important stat... Like, look at this. What? It's like, oh, outplayed. There's literally nothing that he could have done there. Good dodge in the Ezreal Q. Like, Zillion just clicks him and he's just slower. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just become a Zillion main, stop whinging about the champion, just get rank 1 by accident. I just... I feel like all you have to do on that champion is, like, get one person ahead and then you can control the entire game by making that champion unkillable. And then his ult as well, like, uh, it's on such a low cooldown for what it is. I just hate that champion being in the meta. I'm just complaining because I have Zillion, fed Zillions come top all the time when my bot goes 0-20. So we see Ezreal and Zillion translating their lead over the top side of the map, taking tier 1 of top. Uh, 14 minutes, Ezreal swap, uh, Echo swap, sorry, by taking the Cloud Dragon. Definitely not too bad. Don't really know what Ezreal's doing. He's probably taking the blue right now. Zillion, oh no, he's rotating mid. Zillion might have base, maybe had a buy. Um, despite what the minimap says, there's no Dragon up. We see him keep pushing. We see Ezreal, Zillion mid, so he knows he's safe to push as well as Garen in the bot lane. So we'll keep going and try and break this tower. I don't even know if there was tower bounties at this point. No, I think there was. Anyway, we'll just see what happens. So this does look like it's going into a... Wait, what did Phage build into? Sterix? I think this was before the Sterix change where Sterix gave 50 AD. Definitely was a very strong item on set. I think most champions that went like a uh, Gore Drinker that weren't um, like damage bruises, so like a Fiora or Riven, would just go straight into um, would just go straight into Sterix. Let's see what he builds into here. We're taking the entire resources off the top side of the map. As we know, taking enemy jungle uh, resources is worth is double the value basically, because as we see, I'm trying to get a kill on the blood here. Let's see if it works. 
Alright, just one shots to Vlad, no worries. Vlad not respecting this set there. I mean, probably didn't really know he was coming, but anyway, hits a very very clean E into QQ into Gore Drinker and Ignite. Nidalee's top side here. Set can probably kill her. That should be a Sterex almost finished, I think. I haven't seen really many people build Sterex. So let's like kind of break down the uh, the butterfly effect of the way that League of Legends works. So we see because he killed Vlad, Nidalee has to come and answer top. So she has to like come and sort set out or go and apply some pressure, let herself be known. While she's doing that, she's not checking Herald. So that gives the map an advantage just because Yao Chaman got a solo kill top. In League, there's such a big concept around like the butterfly effect. So like you might be like, oh, why do I lose all these games? It actually could be something wrong that you're doing that like transpires into a lot of wrong decisions that your teammates make or that maybe there's things that you do that make the enemy make mistakes. Who knows? But your actions can lead to the enemy or your teammates making the right or wrong call. So you have to be very conscious of like kind of where you show on the map, for example, where you're applying pressure, uh, where you're pathing to straight out of the base, what items you buy. Everything can kind of dictate uh, the way the enemy plays and also the way your teammates play. So if you're kind of like one of those players who's between a 40 and 50% win rate and you're kind of wondering why it seems like you just lose all these games, it could just definitely, that could be a reason why. is because you're just doing something inherently wrong. So you've Vlad mucking around with set here. Maybe there's a bit of an all in here. Level 13 to level 10, this shouldn't really be even close, honestly. Alt in two seconds and then E. Everyone's missing on the map. He's still going to go for this, I think. All right, we get everything out of Vlad. He knows Echo is still hovering topside. This could be actually a good skirmish for them, depending on if Ezreal's here or not. Uh, let's see if they scare him away. So Zillion just pressing the outplay button. Lovely. Bruh. No way. Makes the best of a bad situation. Holy shit, that E was amazing. I want to go back to that, actually. That was really lovely. I just didn't expect that. I thought he was just using it to mitigate the damage, but holy shit. So we get a 7-11 true damage. Both both true damage onto the Vlad and the Zillion. Dude, Zillion ult is such a cuck. Like, can you imagine if he kills both there? Gets double triumph, and he gets like a 1k shutdown because Zillion's so fed. Like, oh, fuck that champ, bro. Holy. Janna ults to get them off. I feel like Janna's still probably going to die. Ezreal outranges her. Yep, Ash split putty pushing in the bot lane. We see Zerus join the fray, having to flash, trying to compensate for his teammate. Still survives though. Zerus got a pretty big, pretty hefty shutdown on him. Garen's pushing mid, three mid, take tier one. Finally, we see him pick up the rest of his Sterex. He's going into. I'm gonna say it's Force of Nature, in the way that we're going. Uh, I know that he goes dead man's plate this game, so Force of Nature kind of synergizes as well with set two, giving him uh, fixes up a little bit of that movement speed issue that we have. So does the, he does have uh, ult up here. He didn't get to use it last fight. As he half HPs the Ezreal. Dude, Zillion's ult's back up again. Oh, that champ, bro. Doesn't say anything. Just thinking about what he did wrong. I mean, maybe if he ults Garen, who knows? I didn't, I didn't see a window there, but anyway. We go top lane, we enter the waves, 150 CS at 19 minutes. The score's sort of, like, not stabilized, but it's definitely better than what it was. It was, like, turbo doomed. Now it's, eh, doom doom, but, like, 10 on 9 Ezreal, uh, 7 on 12 Zillion. That's their bot lane. That's what he's playing against. An accumulative, like, 20 kills worth of gold. So, like, when you think about it in this regard, we've got a level 13 set versus basically 20 kill economy bot lane that have just been able to get resources all around the map. And this guy has to put his six kills into leading the game. You know what I mean? Like, as a top laner, it can feel so doomed because you have to... Like, he's one person fed. There's, like, everyone on the enemy team is, like, as fed, if not more fed than him. Do you know what I mean? Like, that... To me, if I'm, like, maybe 2-0, and 3-0, and whatever, and then I look around the map and their jungler's, like, 4-1, and one, their bot lane's, like, you know, six kills each or something like that, I'm like, I'm only one person. How do I translate this to the rest of the map? And that's what he does this game. As we see, he heads mid lane, so he's kind of probably looking for more of a, a bit of a skirmish here. He does have ult up. No flash. As they drop the Herald mid for no reason. Uh, Dragon gets taken by the enemy team. So we do have Soul kind of pressuring. As we see Zillian sort of hovering. Ash just farming it up. 122 to 159 in the bot lane. She's still a fair bit, ahead, still a fair bit behind. Sorry. Dragon is off the map. We do have to look at Baron now. Baron is definitely a tangible resource for both teams. Uh, I would probably be betting on a Baron fire breaking out here. Um, as I said, I haven't watched his VOD in a few days. I don't know exactly what happens next. Still kind of hovering around mid. We know he can't really push because as set as a champion, he just gets kited so hard um, when it's in a 2v1 sort of situation. So he's just going to have to look for maybe a pick with his team here. Doesn't have flash for another 79 seconds. 
definitely weakens his pick potential here. We don't know. I feel like they probably wouldn't do Baron just yet, right? Echo goes to lead, eats a Nidalee Spear and almost a Zillion Bomb. Janna coming out of base. Ash still hovering. Like, Ash does scale very well and provides a lot of utility for a team. Maybe they go for a pick with Ash ult here. Who knows? I can't remember how this happens. Zillion clearing those waves, as I said before. Ezreal taking off about a, almost half his HP. All right. Oh, that's literally like a game winning... Dude, we're, we're going to have to watch this back. All right, his whole team's wiped, though. So it's literally just set versus the world. Zonyas, fun, cute, nice. All right, gets a massive fight there. So as I, was, I like, literally was just saying, Ash just has such insane uh, utility. So leads with the uh, <laughs> as he's just running between. This is like the most useless situation. There's nothing you can do. All right, let's watch this fight back, guys. This is sick. So we see it leads with the Ash ult straight onto the Ezreal. Bit of a janky hitbox, nonetheless. I also see Xiaochao Meng. I never do this, but I feel like I should start doing it. He always leads with... He E's, uh, even if the E can't provide a stun. I don't know why he does it, but... Like, I mean, he just uses it to drag them back into the, his team. I never really use it. Like, I probably would have just gone for the ult and then saved the E, but... Like, obviously, he brings two key targets back into his team there. So, Ash picks up the 1k, and then the most... The tankiest member of the team gets led into his team. Vlad flashes forward, Nidalee flashes forward... They're just kind of wiping their backline. He can be ignored because he's so tanky. Nidalee gets her broken stopwatch out. Zillion, again, just kites in. We've already seen his part. So he definitely has the resources now onto his team. So he's given Ash a 1k. We'll skip forward. He'll go into his force of nature here. We see him pick up the Negatron Cloak and the... The fuck's that called? Is it like Winged Moonplate or something? I could be wrong. I don't know. It gives a little bit of MS. Either way. So he's definitely tanking now. Uh, Gordrick Asterix. His W is fully maxed as well, so his W is going to be hurting as the enemy team takes Baron. 16 to 30. Still looking pretty doomed. I'm not going to lie. This game definitely still doesn't look that favorable. As we see, uh, Ezreal's died once. Zillion yet to die. Did I say that right? Zillion yet to die. 22 minutes into the game. 9 on 15 Zillion. Got like a 75% KP. Taking this resource off the map while he can. We need him to finish this uh, Force of Nature. Oh, that's way clear, so satisfying. 1,200 to go. So he's got like one more wave and that's it. As the enemy team groups mid, obviously pretty smart when they have an Ezreal and a Baron up wave. It's going to be very hard to clear, even with a Fed Zerath. So he leaves now. He does have Flash. So this is probably the biggest thing. This, this like, how he uses this Flash, this resource is so insanely valuable. So let's see how he spends it. Uh, blood gets pretty chunked. Uh, not too bad. We lose Ez uh, Echo's ult. See, like, with this, again, I'd still be feeling the game's doing. Janna gets taken out of one-third HP as the arrow whiffs. Oh, this is, like, the worst situation. Watching this is giving me PTSD. This is just, like, a top laner's nightmare. Okay, enemy team breaks in here. Poking with Nidalee. Half HP is one of their carries. Ezreal's still poking out with his Qs as well. Nidalee's fake with their spears. Can't miss. Enemy team still floating around. If you're in enemy team's position, there's nothing else to get. Just leave. For some reason, lead players are so bloodthirsty and think kills are the only thing that matter. You can literally win the game with like 10 kills and just not fighting for the rest of the game. You have such a lead, you can just pressure them into like to not contesting you. Just use your strength that you already have to like choke them out of the map and just take resources, take towers, push them in, poke them, everything. You don't have to fight all the time. As they take their third dragon off the map, so Soul is now something that they can go for. We have Baron in three minutes and Soul in 450. Taking Red Buff off his team because he's just that much stronger than Ash. Garen kind of looking like he might be picked here. Definitely is. As he yoinks the kill, definitely trusts himself with the resources. Let's see if we can eventuate this into anything more. We've got a 4v5 on our hands. Garen's dead. Their main front line might look for an ult onto Nidalee. Still dancing around. I don't know if they're even sieging. I'd probably take the reset if I was the enemy team here as he just eats that Nidalee Spear like it's nothing. Like an absolute Cheerio. does no damage at all. The mid lane's been pushed in by the super creeps. Vlad's been pushing it in. Clears this wave. Got to start working towards a little bit more armor now. Now he's got that magic resist. Get some magic resist because we're obviously against 3 AP. So Nidalee, uh, obviously Force, Force Nature works really well with movement speed. We're against Nidalee, Zillion, and Vladimir. So the MR was kind of like a bit of a... Um, Garen's not that strong. So I think the armor could have probably come after the Force of Nature. 
but it gives a little bit of that MS compensation as well. Heads top. Got another winged moon plate as well. He's walking around at 422 move speed, so definitely not slow. 30 MS up on Vlad. Uh, Echo is going to have to ult here, surely. Eats a spear. No? Good dodge on the Q. So even this, just like, this pick, like, he has, like, an affinity for these windows because we've just gotten, like, so many valuable resources out of the team. So we've got Ezreal's E, Vlad's W, Zillion ult, and now he has to walk forward here. All right, let's see if he can kill this Ezreal here. Surely, W. Gore drinker, oh my god. Like, oh, like the amount of efficiency and val like value he's getting out of his spells. He gets a 1k on Zillion as well, finally. Garen's splitting bot lane there. He sees the Garen bot and immediately goes for the pick on Vlad. It leads with an E. Is such a big CC. I like, never even think to do that. We see the enemy team obviously walking forward and pressuring, but oh, I want to go back and watch that. Just where that transpires from. So we see the enemy getting quite cocky. Where's Garen? So they see Garen bot, but they actually didn't see Garen bot before this fight even started. So we get Vlad's phase rush, Vlad's W, Ezreal's E out of it, Zillion's ult, and the fight hasn't even started really yet. So it can lead straight into Zillion, uh, Ezreal flashing. Flashes on the Ezreal, W, Gordrink, or Auto. And then they get the 1k on Zillion. Just these sort of fights, guys. Like, he's obviously led the fight very, very well. Exactly how you want to play it with champion, like, set. Leading the fight like that, getting that free stun on uh, Vlad as well. Just, un like, literally textbook sort of stuff to lead your team to the win. Level 16 as well. Next highest is level 14. Skip it forward. Taking tier 2. Takes tier 2. Got 3.3k in the bank. 11, 5, and 5. Currently at a 75% KP. Still out farming the Garen, even though the Garen was just splitting for 8 years. Dead Man's Plate. Almost on his, oh, he's on his 6th item now. Let's see what he finishes off with. Serrated Serrated Dirk? Question mark? I don't even know what he goes into. I can't even remember, to be honest. Just a giant spell. I wonder what that's for. Titanic Hydra, maybe? A set works very well with Titanic Hydra. His W is going to be hurting a lot. A lot. As we've seen him head mid lane, just looking to lead his team in these fights again. His backline's actually pretty strong now in the Zerath and the Ash. Both picked up a few levels off these skirmishes. As we've seen in Italy, probably a little bit overextended. He's cruising around at 457 MS, so he can definitely pick if he needs to. Until Zillion presses the outplay button. He's forcing a bit of a split here. We've got three. Did that was that a max range Nidalee Spear? Oh no, it was a Vlad Q. Still leading, Garen engages. Set just one Oh my lord. What? Mitigated 440. He would have done 1300 damage through Garen's W. Holy Sterix gets popped. Ezra, uh, Echo uses his uh, ult. Zerath leads into his ult here as well. Like, their team's kind of in shambles. They don't really know what's going on because they've had to kind of follow up this janky support from the Garen. As we see the ult... Oh, bro. Will he surely falls? Bruh. I can't explain it. This man, the way he plays set, we just get a five-man wipe. 26 to 31. So we have to look for the re-engage here. So we see Vlad's still walking forward. He knows, so in this kind of situation, he has really good awareness because he knows the fact that his teammates, his enemy team is kind of above the Vlad here somewhere in this sort of fog. In your head as the set, you have to kind of like be imagining where the Ezreal would be positioned because you're ulting them into a fog of war. So we see, we know, like, as I just said, Ezreal somewhere up here. Immediately, that tiny little click behind the Vlad to reposition, to ult him into the Ezreal. Watch this, like he'll walk back with just one step right there. Alts Ez, ult him into the Garen. The Garen falls off the, the Xerath Q and the set alt. The Vlad's forced to use pull. The W does 900 damage to the Ezreal. Gets shielded by the Janna and his triumph comes through. Just leads the team fight so well. That would be... I can't remember the last time that wasn't in a rank, like that was in a rank game that I led a fight like that. Just commands the lead. Knows exactly how to use his resources to, to lead his team. Like, gets Baron out of this and a five-man wipe on what was essentially a 20-kill bot lane. If you're that bot lane, surely you're pinging the shit out of this Garen. You get Baron. Let's go ahead. Level 17, level 15, 14. Ezreal's level 15 as well. Game's not over yet. Still has to play the fights well. We know Ezreal didn't have flash, so he was obviously timing. Ezreal's flash is about 10 seconds before sets. If you flash on the same time as you carry, it's a good idea to um, be matching the flashes there and timing them on your own. 
Take some more resource off the map. Ah, oh, we're going to Anathema's Chain. So whether he uses this on Nidalee, Vlad, or Ezra will be interesting. One more wave. Need 1600 for Anathema's Chains. I would personally use it on Ezreal. I could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe he's fishing for level 18 here. He knows that uh, Zillion and Ezreal will be top. There's no way Zillion's going anywhere that's not next to Ezreal. 1800 gold is full build. Oh no, he's going to Titanic Hydra. Never mind. Maybe he'll look to take down tier 2 here. So not resetting whenever he doesn't have to. And his team dies mid lane, unfortunately. So Set's not with them. But they still choose to fight for some reason. Keeps pushing. I think he's willing to sacrifice his shutdown here. There's three missing. I oh, know they're just pushing mid for the for the win. So he'll probably finish the inhib here. No, it doesn't finish the inhib. Let's see, not a bad call. Does still have the Baron, so he can actually base in time. He's gonna have to base quickly though. Oh, if Vlad stopped him there, they actually might lose. If Vlad actually stopped him there, they lose the game. So holding his ult, Zillion presses the outplay button. Half HP is the Ezreal. E, Gore Drinker, Ignite. Bruh. Just running at a 580, just outrunning a Zillion somehow. Where did you get this movement speed from? Is that Janna? Janna, Deadmans, and Force of Nature? Bro. Did they just end, surely they just end the game with that. Oh, I don't know if they can. They got three up still. Nidalee's just farming top lane. But the thing is though, like when you get picks like this, you can use it to force like an off tempo end. So like, for example, there's three alive that have to defend. So he has ult in 20 seconds, which is when Ezreal comes up. But if he can lead with his ult before then and like sort of like start a fight without Ezreal Zillion. So then three people like this. So Vladimir gets picked. W. Nice Zonyas almost kills the Garen. Oh my God. This is what I mean by an off-tempo fight. So we get picks while Ezreal Zillion are dead. Two die, so now Ezreal Zillion come alive, and then two more are still dead. So we take mid inhib, and then we go to look to take body inhib here. Jana ults for the heal. Ezreal ult half HP is the Zerath. Still running around their base, getting a little bit poked out. Ezreal's half HP though. Zillion, uh, Zerath is also doing a lot of damage. We got the menaces back on the map. The Zillion, outplay button. Might as well take the bottom inhib while we're here. I don't know if we'll be looking for the end, but let's just see how this eventuates. So uh, Zillion gets hit by the Ash W. Maybe he just dies here. Zillion's off the map. He's still got his Sterics available. Sterics comes through. W used to dodge the damage from the tower. Waiting for the next wave. This could be the end. Garen and Vlad are still dead for 10 seconds. Just Nidalee, Nidalee and Ezreal. No, Ezreal died. What did Ezreal die do? Just like that. 13, 5, and 13 out of 33 kills. 26 out of 33 KP, and the game is just over. Just like that. This is the kind of gameplay that I just... I love to watch. Like, Ignite Top Laner too. He can't even TP bot to help. Incredible stuff. Guys, I had so much fun watching this gameplay. If you enjoyed it as well, feel free to leave a like. If you want more content like this, please leave a comment on someone else if you'd like me to leave, like me to do a review on them as well. I had to hold him on for so long. I got back from the gym before and I'm just so tired. <laughs> I've been holding on, holding in a yawn that entire gameplay. Holy shit. I need to go to bed. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like and sub if you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.